Hello, everyone. I am Jonathan Brightbill, Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General. Welcome to the Environment and Natural Resources Division's Annual Award Ceremony. The year 2020 has been one of many challenges. In spite of them, ENRD has much to be proud of. While this will be the first year in a long time that ENRD will not be able to assemble in the department's Great Hall to celebrate our accomplishments, I am pleased to host this virtual award ceremony. I'd like to first thank Principal Deputy Associate Attorney General Claire Murray and our Assistant Attorney General, Jeffrey Bossert Clark, now acting as head of the Civil Division, for contributing to today's program. I would also like to thank Margaret McCarthy for her work coordinating this virtual ceremony and all who have contributed to it. In a few moments, we will announce the winners of the division's major annual awards. This will be followed by a listing of the recipients of the AAG Awards for Excellence. This year, section level awards will be announced by your chiefs and awarded by them. Before announcing our awards, I want to take a few minutes to commend everyone for the outstanding job that the division continued to do this year, despite the challenges of remote operations. You worked tirelessly to adapt to the constraints imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. You continued to execute our mission to uphold this nation's environmental laws and their reforms, protect its wildlife and natural resources, and defend the public fisc. At the same time, many of you managed to care for high-risk family members, learn new ways of remote litigation, and run virtual learning academies for your kids at home. And I'm proud to say you did so without compromising the quality of our work in the slightest. While many deserve congratulations this year, I must first recognize the efforts of one team that, since March, has made it all possible. The Pandemic Network team, led by Rick Taman, with Dave Albertini, Sonia Howes, Akis Picknis, Joseph Simcox, and William Taylor, helped the division pivot from an office-based environment to maximum telework in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As we gradually head back into the office, we continue to rely daily on the team's hard work and dedication to keeping the division functioning. We do so cognizant of the financial hardship facing many in our country and of those we have lost along the way. The division's highest honors this year, the Tom C. Clark II Award and Muskie Chafee Award will be awarded by AAG Clark. They pay tribute to one attorney for using his talents to preserve the public fisc and to another for a lifetime of achievement in the division and in the field of environmental law. The pandemic may have kept us at home, but it did not stop you, ENRD's dedicated attorneys and staff. Just last month, we concluded the largest civil enforcement case of the past several years. German automaker Daimler AG and its American subsidiary agreed to pay $875 million in civil penalties and approximately $70 million in other penalties for alleged emissions cheating. They will also recall and repair the emission systems and perform federal and state mitigation projects anticipated to cost about $556 million. This settlement will protect the American public from excess NOx emissions that negatively impact human health. Sometimes criminal enforcement becomes necessary. Last year saw the first ever prosecution of a ship operator for air pollution violations thanks in part to the innovative thinking of folks in our environmental crime section, one of whom we recognize today. Our division has also defended numerous administrative rulemakings. For example, EPA redefined the waters of the United States, protected by the Federal Clean Water Act. In the Affordable Clean Energy, or ACE, rule, EPA established new greenhouse gas emission guidelines to replace the Clean Power Plan. Today, we honor a team of lawyers who worked closely with EPA and other client agencies to ensure that these and other exceptionally complex and significant rules will withstand legal challenges. 
We are grateful for their dedication and attention to detail. The division also played a very significant role in the development of the Council on Environmental Qualities, or CEQ's, new regulations under the National Environmental Policy Act. We celebrate the work of CEQ in promulgating the first broad changes to NEPA's implementation in over 30 years. I want to thank the division attorneys who assisted in reviewing the proposed regulations, which are currently being challenged in five district court cases. We've been at the forefront of many priority infrastructure projects this year as well. Awards today go to teams defending the permitting for energy projects, including pipelines, and helping to advance security infrastructure projects on our southern border with Mexico. We also recognize the work of division attorneys securing access to water for priority projects, including by defending the Central Valley Project in California and by asserting water rights on behalf of the Navajo Nation and Hopi tribe. I've served in the division for more than three years now. In taking on certain additional responsibilities of late, I've had the opportunity to now touch all of the division's work and to see the professionalism and dedication across all we do. Many of us have lost loved ones this year, and we have all lost one of our leaders and friends in Law and Policy Section Chief Karen Wardzinski. But we will see an end to the COVID-19 pandemic, and we will emerge stronger than before, more nimble, more efficient, and more appreciative of this unbelievable privilege to come to these offices, smile at and shake the hands of so many talented and dedicated colleagues, and share the pride of working in the greatest division in the Department of Justice. Those days will come again soon. Thank you all for your service to the American people and congratulations to our annual awards recipients. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to celebrate the division's many outstanding achievements over the past year. Although we can't be together in person, I want to begin by thanking everyone watching this for your exceptional work in support of the Department of Justice's mission. This has been an extraordinary year by any measure. I know that many of you are working remotely, but none of us have seen any decline in our workload, and no one has seen any decline in the quality of ENRD's representation. In fact, your Assistant Attorney General and my friend Jeff Clark did such a good job with your division that he's actually been given a second division to run. Thankfully, John Brightbill has ably stepped up to lead the division. Thank you, John. I've been fortunate to work with ENRD since becoming Principal Deputy Associate Attorney General in May 2019. Despite working the with the division for almost a year and a half, I'm still surprised by the breadth and diversity of the important work that you do. During the course of any one of my regular meetings with division leadership, we'll cover efforts to combat the trafficking of shark fins, the dumping of hazardous waste, and efforts to expand Arlington Cemetery before seamlessly transitioning to cases defending some of the most complex, far-reaching regulations in the Federal Register. On a daily basis, ENRD attorneys and support staff tirelessly defend and enforce our nation's environmental laws and regulations in court. The days may sometimes be long, and the work is definitely not easy, but striving to protect our nation's natural resources is important and rewarding work, and it's yielded big wins this year. As just one example, I want to take a moment to congratulate the division on its recent $1.5 billion settlement of Clean Air Act claims involving vehicle emissions cheating by Daimler AG. This resolution can demonstrates the department's and your commitment to enforcing our nation's environmental laws and protecting the public health. It's also my great honor today to recognize just a few of the award winners. First, I would like to congratulate the recipients of the Attorney General's Awards, who will be honored at a separate ceremony. This year, among others, we recognize the success of the team that defended the United States against claims in the Juliana litigation, a case that was, at its core, a defense of the rule of law and of the boundaries of Article 3. Now let's turn to the award the division will be presenting today. We celebrate the division's efforts, helping our client agencies draft rules lawfully and then defend those rules in court. Today, the division recognizes in particular the many individuals who have worked to defend the rule defining waters of the United States as well as the Affordable Clean Energy, or ACE, rule. John Brightbill and exceptional teams from the division have defended those rules in court, sometimes for as long as nine and a half hours at a time, even in appellate courts. The division and our client agencies appreciate your hard work. The division continues to defend approvals of pipelines throughout the country, 
all in support of our nation's energy policy. Today, the division will celebrate teams that have worked tirelessly to ensure that construction may continue on two of these pipelines, the Keystone XL and Atlantic Coast pipelines. Of course, ENRG also plays a role in ensuring that pipelines operate safely without violating our environmental laws. In that vein, I congratulate ENRD for skillfully negotiating a recent $60 million settlement with a pipeline company that had discharged crude oil into the Pacific Ocean near Santa Barbara, California. In collaboration with the Civil Division, your division secured wins for infrastructure projects on the southern border. Division employees have been hard at work getting land appraised, clearing title, and defending challenges under environmental, procedural, and inverse taking statutes. Today, the division will recognize the significant contributions of the appraisal unit team in these efforts. In addition, the division continues to diligently protect the country's trust responsibilities to Native Americans. Today, we recognize excellent advocacy in the water rights adjudication for the Lower Colorado River. Through work like this, the division secures for tribes both the benefits of resources held in trust and the ability to promote economic development on tribal land. This ceremony provides an opportunity to celebrate and thank those whose outstanding work ensures the continued protection of our environment, natural resources, wildlife, and animals, while reducing economic burdens on the public. I am honored to be part of today's celebration. Thank you for your work advancing the important goals of the department and of the division. I am pleased to announce this year's winners of the Environment and Natural Resource Division's highest honors, the Tom C. Clark II Award and the Muskie Chafee Award. The first award is established in memory of Tom Clark, one of the finest trial attorneys in ENRD's distinguished history. This is the third year that the Tom C. Clark II Award is being given to an individual or team for exceptional trial preparation. This year's winner is Michael Augustini, a senior trial counsel in the Environmental Defense Section. Over the course of his nearly 15 years with the division, Mr. Augustini's advocacy and skills have saved the country approximately $400 million in potential contribution costs under the Comprehensive Environmental Responsibility, Compensation, and Liability Act, or CERCLA. Mr. Augustini established himself as a leader immediately upon joining the division. Having served now as first chair in four trials, Mr. Augustini obtained fair and favorable outcomes for the United States in each case that saved millions of dollars in taxpayer funds. Most frequently, Mr. Augustini defended the United States against circle claims for compensation for alleged releases. He also secured wetlands restoration and mitigation and the payment of civil penalties to the U.S. Treasury while serving as lead counsel in a Clean Water Act enforcement action. Mr. Augustini has also negotiated several favorable settlements that helped the United States avoid costs and excessive litigation. Of perhaps even greater significance to the division, Mr. Augustini has shared his expertise with others as a mentor, advisor, and leader. He is an excellent role model for attorneys and staff and advises throughout the government on policies relating to CERCLA. His generosity ensures that future generations of ENRD attorneys benefit from his unique talents, and continue his tradition of excellence. Thank you, Michael, for your service to the division and to the country. Our next honor, the Muskie Chafee Award, commemorates the bipartisan nature of environmental law in the form of contributions from Senators Edmund Muskie and John Chafee. Together, they shepherded through Congress the initial versions of the major environmental statutes. This year's honors go to our dear friend and colleague, Karen Wardzinski. Karen only recently retired as chief of the law and policy section after working for the federal government for over 30 years. Her tireless leadership and outsized role shaping environmental law put her in the elite company of this award's namesakes. Ms. Wardzinski came to the law and policy section in 1999 and became chief in 2010. Under her leadership, the division built an exceptional network of partnerships inside and outside the federal government and contributed to the development of cutting-edge environmental law on a range of issues. Ms. Wardzinski played a critical part in developing the international partnerships the division relies on now to combat the global trafficking of wildlife and timber and to coordinate action regarding shared ocean resources. She also served with distinction on the task force for the protection of coral reefs. Domestically, Ms. Wardzinski was at the forefront of leading environmental policy initiatives. For instance, she oversaw the division's initial response to the Deepwater Horizon crisis, the development of the division's first victims' rights program, and the protection of Native American families through the Indian Child Welfare Act. 
Like Mr. Augustini, Ms. Wardzinski's greatest impact on the division may be as a leader and a mentor. She managed with warmth and humor, but was known for her incisive questions and firm sense of purpose. Over the years, she supported numerous internal efforts for the personal and professional development of division employees and to improve diversity in the workforce. Personally, Karen helped me learn important points about RICRA, and she assisted me on an important project designed to preempt inefficient lawsuits on the Hill in the mid-2000s. Karen was a friend. And as demonstrated by the American Bar Association's Environment Section naming her 2020 Government Attorney of the Year, Ms. Wardzinski was also a leader in the broader community, serving as a mentor and resource to countless individuals inside and outside the government. Ms. Wardzinski also won the Presidential Rank Award in 2017. Unfortunately, Karen passed away this month after a long battle with cancer. Karen fought so long and valiantly, I was surprised and saddened to hear of her passing and disappointed I did not get the chance to speak to her one last time. As we celebrate her achievements today, we pledge to carry forward the legacy of intellectual curiosity, of warmth, helpfulness, and determination in support of the division's mission. Thank you.